Hello guys, Adventures Infinity here, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we went through Pokemon Tower, fighting a whole ton of Ghastlies. This time, I think it's time to bid adieu to Navi, and say hello to a new special friend. Tassadar of the High Templar Order. Now let's take a good look at him, shall we? As you might see... Oh, Tassadar's still asleep. But he has teleport. Who can guess what it is? Yes, our High Templar is indeed an Abra. I wasn't originally planning on using this, mostly because... Well, before, I was only able to get up to a Kadabra, but I have since found a way to make trading work with the setup I'm using. Now, with Lavender Town in uh, on the back horizon, it is time to go through the routes with probably the most trainers in between two gyms. So, let's get started. Today I decided, because of the insane length of this gym, or this, uh, set of routes, that in post-production I would go ahead and time-lapse it. Let me know if you guys prefer the time-lapse or simply just cutting the trainer battles. Now, as you see there we get TM39, it contains Swift. I went ahead and I used that for with Falco to go ahead and replace Gust because in this gen Gust is normal and 40 attack power so only little more than tackle at this point. And Ramu being awesome as ever! <laughs> oh, I just had to throw that in there. If you're wondering what this is, this is actually a remix of a Pokemon Gold theme found on overclockedremix.org. Excellent website for all your gaming remix needs. I definitely suggest going over there and taking a browse through some of your favorite games. The site definitely does not get as much attention as it rightly should. But yeah, the thing with these couple routes is there are so many trainers as you go from Lavender Town wheeling all the way down the coastline to Fuchsia City. And I'm speeding up the uh, clip here almost six times. I've taken about an hour and 40 minutes of footage down to about 20 minutes, and it's only through this one path from one city to the next. Essentially, this is a great big grinding excuse for the game. But now, we can actually deal with the sleeping Pokemon Snorlax, and I actually catch it here. Unfortunately, he knocks out Ramu right quickly. But I get some sand attacks in so he can barely do anything. And then proceed to use Leviathan. Use a bunch of ice beams in the hope that I might actually get the frozen status. There we go, I actually did get it there after several attempts. Switch to Falco for a quick attack, which nearly scared me because it critted and nearly killed the Snorlax. And then I went through about six or seven Great Balls before I finally got him to stay. They were breaking immediately, so I kind of paused for a second to be like, can I even catch them? But I did get them in the end. Used Abra used my good friend Abra to teleport all the way back to the Pokemon Center and heal up. Now the song you're hearing here is the tune provided by Google for, that I used for my Super Mario World Let's Play. Now I... I've been catching Pokemon, and I just went back and I got the item finder from the Professor Oak's aid that we met before. And more on that in a moment, but as you can see here, Abra actually evolves into Kadabra! And we get the Super Rod from the Silence Bridge Guru. I immediately took Kadabra through my setup and got him traded up to an Alakazam. Now the unfortunate thing I realized only after accomplishing this is that during the fight where Rex amazingly withstood two self-destructs was Tassadar ended up getting two levels and skipped 
from 15 to 17 and thus skipping learning confusion. It was rather annoying. But yeah, now we have our Alakazam, and we're just waiting for him to get an attack so that he can be useful. Unfortunately, he doesn't learn Psybeam until 27. Essentially, confusion on steroids. Now, cutting that bush there will actually get you access to a few random encounters. There's not a whole lot on these paths here, other than you can find Farfetch'd in yellow and Ditto in a couple places in red and blue. Right there, I was researching where to find a couple items because I realized I had passed one up. Back near the gate or checkpoint, you can find a hyper potion in one of the trees. After grabbing that, I wheel back down around to continue on my trainer battling. And here we have another cool remix from Overclocked Remix for Pokemon Red. Battle for the Badges, I believe it is. it's called. If you just look up the game that you're looking for, Overclocked Remix will show all the remixes they have of said game. But yeah, this entire route has just been me buddy systeming Tassadar up to speed. And at this point, Rex is looking worse for wear, so it's time to switch to other people. Now, the other Pokemon that I caught before this recording, with, along with Abra, is I went ahead, and most of them were near Cerulean City. I caught an Oddish, a Bellsprout, a Venomat, a Rattata, which, because I amazingly didn't have one already, I thought I did. And I also caught a Jigglypuff. I think that brings my grand total, including all the Abra evolutions, up to 33 in the Pokedex. So, thus I was able to get the Item Finder. The Item Finder will activate when you are near an item, but will not pinpoint it. So, after you know that you're near something, it's just a matter of walking around tapping the A button until you find whatever it is you are looking for. Now here in that maze that you just saw me wandering through, there's a little alcove you can reach almost immediately that has a calcium hidden in the little alcove. And upcoming here in a moment, we also have a PowerPoint up in a different alcove. Of course, I give the calcium to Ramu as well, just making him up for the fact that he can't evolve still. He's becoming quite a powerhouse now, ever since I've been giving him all the uh, vitamin items I've been finding, as well as buying a couple myself. Mostly focusing on his defense, because I think his attack is actually well enough already. He just needs to be able to survive to make his attacks. So there you go. Obviously not something you would do for competitive, but EV, EVs in Gen 1 are kind of weird. There isn't the 512 limit like there are in future games. You know, you could literally get bonus stats in everything. Though the only encounter that will actually give you EVs and everything is fighting Mews, which obviously doesn't happen too often. But other than that, you can just max out stats if you wish. I think any Pokemon traded to later gens are kind of, I guess, retrofitted to the new standards. At this point, I'm kind of running out of options for fighters to help buddy system Tassadar up, so I did a group heal, and at this point I'm starting to run out of all of my main attacks. Thunderbolt is drawing to a close, I think I've used a ton of thrashes on Rex, and I think the digs are all but gone on Valu. So at this point I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go back and have Tassadar teleport me back home. Not to Iyer, but to the Pokemon Center. Yeah, there's the PowerPoint up. And I finally remembered to use some calcium on Ramu. I tried to keep in mind uh, hanging on some of the dialogue for the trainers. But honestly, when you're going for an hour and 40 minutes, you honestly start getting into a groove and kind of just skip past everything. All I can remember at this point was a blur of 
just using the same attacks, trading in Tassadar, trading him back out. I think I got into a rhythm so much that I kept accidentally like trying to run from trainer battles. All right, and I think this is the official. This is called like the official like anthem or something. Again, provided by Google, and this is what I used for my Aladdin Let's Play, actually. Very cool stuff. Yeah, the Google freeware that they have for background music is actually pretty good to fit your needs if you just want something with a certain feel to go into the background. Aside from that, I think I think Tassadar is almost up to snuff. He's level 24. He's got a few more levels to go. And now I just have Leviathan kind of mowing everyone down. We've lost Ramu, Rex, and Valu at this point. Or Ramu, Rex, and Falco. And we're just... I'm just kind of seeing how long I can go before having to inevitably go back to the Pokemon Center, because at this point I'm not going to, you know, waste thousands of Poke Dollars of items to pep everyone back up. I think eventually I do use a Lemonade on Valu to get him back rolling, because I realize that Tassadar is very close to gaining his attack. I mean, he's at 25 now. And the buddy system really kind of cost me it here just because everyone took a ton of damage from getting, you know, pot shots essentially from all the different trainers. But in the end, it's worth it because I gain a powerful new team member. One of the primary things that drove me to make this decision to trade the Navi, my Butterfree, out for. Tassadar, my newly found Alakazam, is that Butterfree wasn't providing anything unique anymore. My Star Fox 64 music coming out in the background too. More Google Freeware. But it came down to the only thing Butterfree was adding was Sleep Powder. Just a way to put enemies to sleep. Her other abilities were Confuse, which I know it's a small chance, but Psychic moves just do that in general, as well as Stun Spore, and Ramu's a lot better at getting enemies paralyzed than Butterfree is, just because of Body Slam and the 30% chance, as well as Thunder Wave, which is guaranteed. So really, Ramu can kind of be my Pokemon catcher. And when you take that away from Butterfree, there's not a whole lot left. So I decided to change out Navi for another sort of heavy hitter. And like I said, originally I did not plan on going for Abra because I was only going to be able to go to the Kadabra stage. And I had done that several times throughout my past playthroughs, so I didn't want to just do that again. Upon finding out a way to get training to work on the uh, emulator I was using though everything just kind of clicked into place and I got Tassadar I seriously considered getting a Ghastly as well and doing the trade for him simply because I also wanted to name him Zeratul to sort of compliment Tassadar both being Starcraft Protoss characters but I just couldn't bring myself to get a Ghastly simply because there wasn't a whole lot I could really do with him other than just have him. Nightshade is kind of the claim to fame in Gen 1, and level isn't really that high a number compared to HP in most cases, unless you're just a frail character. The only other big move that they learn is Hypnosis and Dream Eater, and that's a psychic move. But as you can see, we've got Tassadar up to level 27. He's learned Psybeam, so the battles are starting to go by a lot quicker. You know, it kind of looks like Tassadar is just kind of like looking at everyone, and everyone's just kind of falling over. 
But yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. It certainly doesn't feel like that doing this uh, post-commentary now, but man, getting through that route is a trial in and of itself. And again, let me know if you prefer sped up so you can at least see the battles going on or just simply cutting the uninteresting ones. I'm open to doing either, of course. And I was originally going to include the cycling road as well, just to kind of get all the routes to Fuchsia City kind of covered. But once I realized how long the other route was going for, it was kind of nuts. Now, as you saw there, there's Professor Oak's Aid up in that gateway as well, out at the east end of Fuchsia City. For getting 50 Pokemon in your Pokedex, you'll get the XP share, which would have helped me before because it essentially means you don't have to use the buddy system. Anytime you gain experience, it's split between everyone in your party. Of course, you don't get EVs for that. Oh well. Not really going to be that important, so I might not earnestly go for it until you know I realize how I have 50 and go back for it just for the sake of having it. But, in any case, I went ahead and went back to town, healed up, and now I'm cleaning up the final group of the trainers, and... That puts an end to this long, arduous beach. I mean, the only other alternative would be, of course, doing, you know, a bunch of episodes just dedicated to all the trainer battles here. But this route alone would have been five episodes if I did it that way. And I think that would have gotten real monotonous real fast. Next time, we'll be encountering the Cycling Road, though. And we'll go through and let that be our gameplay for the in-between gyms. Now that we have everyone up to top form, everyone's getting into their 30s, we got a couple people actually ready to level with Valu and Falco. Kind of exciting. And now with a fourth heavy hitter in Tassadar, we're going to really start mowing down the competition no matter what level we are. I think I have just one more. No, I have a I have two more trainers after this to beat. And then we'll finally finish out routes 12, 13, and 14, I believe. The hidden items included a calcium and a power point up in the in the fence maze, as well as a hyper potion on Route 11 neck in a tree near the sleeping Snorlax. So make sure to grab those, as well as the item finder from the gateway near the Snorlax if that's if it's a convenient time, and maybe the XP share once you actually get down to Fuchsia City. Yeah, Valu got poisoned, but he still has a ton of health. And me trying to attack a fly in my room causes me to misclick and lose Ramu. Oh well. <laughs> Sad days. But that just about does it for this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Yellow. This is Adventures Infinity, signing out. Take it easy. <laughs>